Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2019 Honda Civic in the new Sport trim level. The Civic is sitting on 235, 40 Goodyear tires, conveniently named the Eagle Sport tire. Now these are wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Modern Steel Metallic. And it's a very cloudy day, which is good because we don't have shadows, but may not be able to see the color all that well. So hopefully you will. So here in the front, it has gloss black here in the grill, across the front in the center portion. The very bottom has a lot of matte black. You can see the, uh, the differences here. Here's some other models, 2018's over here. So you can see the little bit different here in the front end. Now it has adaptive cruise control. And if it's anything like the previous years, the sensor, is right behind this cover. Now the headlights are in a projector tube for your low beams powered by halogen bulbs. High beams are in a reflector housing and they have black bezels, a gloss black bezel and an LED daytime running light on the outside. Fog lights are in a reflector housing powered by halogen bulbs as well. So looking at the profile, one of the things that pops out to me is how well the wheels blend in with this particular color, but they just look really nice to begin with. Seem like they will blend in and look nice without being too gaudy or tacky on pretty much any color. Now the handles are body colored. The upper portion of the side mirror is a body color. The pillars are a matte black, and then the upper portion here has a chrome trim. Other than that, it's all black as far as the trimming. This is what the key looks like as a proximity key system. Now this is the same key that Honda has used for a while now. And it is a solid feeling key and um, pretty easy. It's rounded off, easy to carry with you because it's rounded off and smooth. Does it, this one has the lock and unlock buttons, the ability to open up the trunk or unlock the trunk. And you have the uh, physical key actually on the inside as well. You can see a little latch there to release it and it slides out this side. Uh, it also has the panic button. So let's go ahead and push that and see what it horn sounds like. All right, so as long as you have the, this key with you, it can be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity to the outside of this door, you can lock the door by pushing this button and you can unlock it simply by putting your hand behind the handle. It senses the key, it senses your hand position and it allows you access. You also have a physical key location here on the driver's side only. Here's the inside of the passenger side door and you have Pretty much all black except for that metallic accents there but it does have some soft touch here at the very top and here on your armrest the rest is a hard plastic and it's textured as well you have them texturing here different types of texturing um, so this helps out with you know just being shiny glossy type plastic with fingerprints all over it Manually adjusted seats here for the passenger. It does have some contrast stitching. And it has a little accent there in the center portion. Looks like a little checkered flag type material. Now on the outside, there's like a vinyl here on the outside here and here. And the inner portion is like a microfiber type cloth. So the dash is a soft touch here and here. Then you have like a little dimpled portion. It kind of looks like a golf ball type dimple. Accent there. Glove compartment is a smooth plastic. And you have a little pass through over here with a power outlet, 12 volt. Also your USB ports there, which we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on but it's something that the passenger can utilize as far as that space. And check out the leg room. When I mean, you have a little bit of the tapering just right in there, but overall wide open. The seat is quite low to the ground though.
The back door is similar in style as the front. One big difference is it only has one soft touch surface here. It's kind of like a vinyl type material, like the front here, hard touch uh, all around the rest of the door. Now it is textured and easy to clean. That's one good thing about the hard touch plastics. Okay, so the back seat is basically a bench seat. It does have some bolstering to simulate a bucket seat, but it is a bench seat on the bottom portion. The back actually folds down in a 60-40 split, so you can add to your trunk space when needed. It also has the latch system for car seats back here. Now I have the seats in a more normal position. Uh, you can put them back a little bit further and compromise the legroom back here, but this is a kind of a normal position and you can see that it has quite a bit of a hump in the center portion but I'll put all the dimensions and specs in the description so taking a look at the back of the vehicle you have a third brake light here at the base of the rear glass and check it out, you have this neat little deck lid spoiler in gloss black. Kind of blends in nice, especially with this color. The taillights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. And check it out, you have a single exhaust here in the back. Looking pretty neat. Now the backup camera is offset way over here. And then the button to release it is here in the center. So I'm not sure why they, seems like a common thing for manufacturers to have it so offset. But uh, that's just the way it is. And you kind of have like a diffuser thing going on back here. So we can push the button to lift the, the, uh, the trunk, but let's go ahead and push this button on the key and see what happens. Okay, so it just releases it to there. Um, so you will have to lift it up. The rest of the way it doesn't take much energy or anything like that but it goes up and here's your trunk space which is surprisingly huge it looks pretty big to me and like i mentioned i'll put the uh the dimensions in the description if your your preference is to read numbers and stuff like that and compare now this has the cargo mat so this takes up some of the space, but you can see there's a little bit more space if you were to take this out. But this helps out with, you know, if you're putting plants or anything that might dirty the trunk, this really helps out. So it's, it's kind of a harder plastic and not super flexible like a rubber one. Uh, so it does make it easy to take out and encapsulate. So like say, if you need, if you have a bunch of dirt or water, let's say you put your snow boots back here and it, and it melts and it has all this water, well, you can, kind of encapsulate the water if you do a little bit better job than what I'm doing now and take it out and dump it and clean it and put it back in so that's one good thing about having this one with the larger walls here as far as a cargo mat okay so under here is your tools for your spare tire a little bit more cargo space and your actual spare tire under there So under here, it does have some exposed metal and speakers and wires. And the way you fold down the rear seats is right here. So you have this little latch here and here, and you can fold down one or the other, and you can see the split right here. So you can fold down one or the other to add to your cargo space back here, or you can fold down both of them and have a huge space. Fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door. So right now it's locked and it locks and unlocks with the key. So if we unlock the vehicle, it also unlocks the fuel door, which is nice. And it's a capless design. So you don't have to worry about having a cap, getting your hands dirty or check engine light turning on or anything like that if you don't tighten it up all the way. To start it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, in a cup holder, whatever. Since this is a manual transmission, you will have to hold the brake and the clutch and push this button. Okay, 
Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. You can see the floor mat hooks in place. There's your accelerator, brake and clutch pedals with the raised rubber aluminum bright pedals, looking pretty nice. You also have a footrest over here. Now it's covered up with plastic, but it does have a, a harder plastic grip um, for your foot to, to go on. So let's take a look under the hood. To raise the hood, there is a latch a little bit to the left of center. So here's your center, reach in a little bit to the left here and you move it to the right. So when we lift it up, so you can see there's the actual latch there, a little bit to the left of center. And it has a prop to hold the hood up. Now it has two places. So you can swing it up and you can put it in this normal spot with the arrow or to raise the hood much higher, you can put it in the second lower spot to get much more access to the engine compartment. I like that, so there you go. Okay, so there is a seal across the back. You can see that? The under portion of the hood actually is insulated on some of it. And then you have a little scoop right there to get the air into the intake. Firewall is insulated. And the strut towers here are braced in with the unibody structure of the vehicle. And it's, uh, Honda uses the term ACE body structure. So if you want to look at, look at more of their safety features, or, you know, as far as their crumple zones and the way to, the body's fabricated in a way to be more safe, you can look up ACE, A-C-E body structure. Okay, so the battery is located here. It's easy to get to and it's also insulated and it's in a battery box. Two point oh liter dual overhead cam, four cylinder engine. So you can see here's the exhaust. There's the intake in the back. And this little engine pumps out 158 horsepower. and it's paired to a six-speed manual transmission in this particular model. Driver's side door is just like the passenger side, except for it has a few more buttons. So you have your power window controls here. The front two are automatic, one touch down, one touch up. Door lock controls, also your side mirror adjustments. You just pick a side and adjust it with that little pad. And there is the ability to open up the trunk here. Now the driver's seat is a manually adjusted seat, but always seems like the driver's seat always has to one up the passenger seat. So in this particular case, it has the height adjustment here in addition to the standard um, adjustments, manually adjusted seats. Here to the left of the steering column, you have some buttons here. So this one is your road departure mitigation system. So actually turn the steering wheel to keep you from running off the road basically. This is different from the lane keep assist which just keeps you between the lanes. Up here you have a forward collision warning system so if you're going to collide with something it's going to give you a little bit of a warning there wake you up or something and then there is your traction control off button default will be on. So you can see this one has a little indicator light letting you know it's on. And the steering column has a tilt and a telescoping adjustment. And the release is way down here. So way down here next to your feet almost. Um, you pull it towards you to release it and push it back down to secure it. Okay, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. Usually I use a shade on the wind, windshield, but it's like really, really cloudy. And it's getting late in the day, so we'll see how it goes. There's a shade there that I typically use. But um doesn't seem like it's too bad as far as the extra light coming in. It might be actually a little bit too dark if I were to use the shade. Okay, so I have the seat all the way back and all the way down, which it kind of feels like, for me, it's a little bit low. So it's kind of like feeling, for me, I'm six feet tall and it's kind of low, which I would have to raise it up probably a little bit just to get more comfortable. Just to give you an idea of the leg room here, not bad. I mean, it, 
the seat goes all the way back, a little bit too far back for me, and I'm six feet tall, so give you an idea there, especially with a clutch. Leather wrap steering wheel, a little bit soft to the touch. There's some grips here at the top. Cruise control is here on the right side, and it has the adaptive cruise control with the lane keep assist here. So when you push this, this turns on this whole system. This is the main control on and off for your lane, to, uh, your, for everything basically. So once you set your cruise control, you can set the distance here between you and the vehicle in front of you. And I'm gonna give you a little indicator there of those little bars indicating the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you with the adaptive cruise control. On the left side, so you have your volume for your radio. It's actually a push button here. These buttons correspond with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. Then you have your Bluetooth phone. You can answer, hang up, and then you have a voice recognition system. This button, when you push that, it actually cycles through main features here on the screen. And we'll get to all, all that in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls are there on the right. On the left side is your turn signal with your headlight controls. So you have off, parking, automatic, and headlights. And then your fog lights are controlled here. And check out the gauges. It has a kind of a physical gauge there on the left and right. Kind of looks like a digital deal, but it is kind of matching the center portion. The center portion is a digital gauge, so it's basically just a screen. So on the left side is your engine coolant temperature, on the right side is your uh, your fuel gauge basically and the center portion gives you a a digital representation of rpms there S digital speedometer and then some information there in the center portion so using these buttons here you can cycle through main features with this one and then you have a selection and enter so if we push the main features cycles through these different icons so we'll start here, push enter, so we can get our fuel economy. Going back to the next one, go here, press enter, shows your oil life. Whatever your radio is doing will show here. Whatever go Whatever's going on with your phone will show up right there. And you can change to kilometers per hour. Then it goes back to your fuel economy. You also have the ability, these buttons, so if I go up and down, if I go up, it changes the audio source, going left and right, will change the actual, like the radio station or the track for your radio. So that's kind of a quick rundown of what these buttons do and how they correspond with the screen. Okay, so your four-wheel flashers are here at the top, and then you have a touch screen. It has a physical volume knob and some physical buttons here on the side, quick access buttons. So when we push home, it's going to take us here. Uh, we can go into our audio, see what that looks like. You have your presets there at the very bottom. You can tune, see, can scan. You can change the audio source here. So we have AM, FM, uh, USB. Bluetooth, Pandora, iPod, and your smartphone. Let's go back here. We can pair a phone. We can go into settings. And then we have a smartphone connection as well. And your Honda Link. Now if you push this right here, it's kind of like a, an Android browser in which you can you know, put apps and widgets and all this stuff here. Uh, there's your app installer, calculator, and then download. So this is kind of just like a Android system here uses the um, the data from your cell phone once it's paired. Uh, same thing with the the Honda Link. This is an app off of your cell phone, and it gives you more more features added to the system here. I'll have to do a separate video on that, showing how how your cell phone interacts with the with Hondas basically. 
And I like the way they have a big digital clock here on the top right. It's easy to read. It's always in that one spot, so you know where, right where to look um, when you're glancing at it, especially if you're driving. So down here is your climate control. You have some physical buttons. Push this button, and it pops up here on the screen. So you have your fan speed here as well as over here. And then your temperature here, where you want the air to blow is across the screen, and you can turn it on or off on the screen as well. You also have your front and rear defrosters recirculate the air or get fresh air. Okay, so down here, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, I guess. Turn the night vision on, maybe that'll help. But right in here is a compartment. It goes in, it has this little place for wires to go in and out of. There's actually one installed right now, and it has a little wire keeper. I don't know if you can see that. And this goes down to this other compartment here. So that's where the, the outlet is, and then you actually keep your devices up here with the wires that go to it. It's a manual transmission, so let's go through the gears here. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then away over here to the right is reverse. When you put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up here, and it has static, or actually get, um, active guidelines. Here. Um, so the, the camera is actually offset, so the guidelines help out with centering the vehicle. You also have different views. It's a real wide angle view there. So there's your armrest. Soft to the touch, but not very soft, not super soft or anything. This slides back. And then you have some cup holders. This actually slides as well. And you have this deeper compartment where you can have a taller cup, thermos, or something like that. You can actually take that cup holder out if you need to by squeezing that and take it out. You can lift this up. There's more space back here. It's kind of getting dark now, but hopefully you can see in there. So you notice this slides back, slides forward. Little compartment there. This lifts up. Here in the very front, you have a USB charge port as well. Rear view mirror has a manual day and night mode. You have some tap lights up here. Also, I'm gonna do a night video, but you see this little light, it's a little ambient light, so it's red. So that's pretty neat, it has a red ambient light in the vehicle. Um, so that way you can kinda get your bearings in the vehicle. That's only with the lights on. I'll turn the lights off, it goes out. And you have a mirror in the visor. Has a little clip on this side. It also slides out. So let's look at the visibility in the back. So you can see the small headrests are there, but not really a big deal. But you also have those little windows in the very rear pillars Kind of give you an indicator if anything's in that area because without that it would be a pretty significant uh block for your view there but it seems to do pretty well as far as visibility looking over my shoulder it looks really wide open um seems like the camera doesn't really do it justice but that's the way it goes sometimes so there you go 2019 honda civic sport with the manual transmission really cool little car appreciate you watching thank you to east coast honda here in myrtle beach south carolina for giving me access to this vehicle and i'll see you guys next time